Italy is surrounded by the sea. We're down in Puglia region. There's specific fish and shellfish local to this area, and we're going to go today and really try to discover some of the wonderful fish and shellfish that is available to us. Megan and April, my GRCC culinary students, are joining me on an educational tour of southern Italian food. I'm showing them the riches of the Adriatic, seafood. We're now on the coast of Italy, down in Puglia. And as you know, Italy is surrounded by the ocean, a very fertile ocean. Today, I thought we would go and explore some of the amazing abundance of seafood and shellfish and fish and try some of that wonderful food. In order to get some of these dishes to be perfectly uh, tender and flavorful, they've developed these amazing uh, techniques. So that's what I really want to show you. Right on the beach, we found a little seafood shop. They had raw sea urchins, which are a great delicacy and have to be eaten extremely fresh to be safe. Girls, look at this wonderful uh, discovery. We're going along the beach area and seeing this uh, person in this little stall with this gorgeous sea urchins. And you can see the sea urchin roll right in here, the edible part. Do you just eat it raw or do you yeah, cook it? No, 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 just raw, completely the way it is. Yeah. Have you ever tasted this before? No. OK, this is the way the locals do it. They just take a little bit of bread, and they scoop out all the roll, just like that. There you go. Try it, see what you think. Mmm. Mm. Tastes just like the sea. It does. Isn't it amazing? It's very mm. creamy. Watch your fingers on these things because they'll bite you. Yeah, and you can't leave any in there because it's very, very precious. Mm. Sea urchins. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Just up the hill from the coast, we visited a farmhouse specializing in culinary tourism. They cook the old way. They cook slowly. April and Megan were about to learn how Italians in this region cook the eight-armed creature from the sea, an octopus. My lifelong friend and chef Nicola Conti was our guide here in Puglia. He explained the process of this unique dish. There you go, girls. This is another dish that uh, peasants, they used to go around the table and cook. And this is octopus. You can see in a clay dish, terracotta dish. And it's cooked also in a terracotta dish. This is a pot that all they eat, but it's not quick they eat, so all they eat. So this gets cooked very, very slowly. You need about five hours and you need a fresh octopus, a little bit of onions, a little bit of water, it's just a stew. Some seasoning, and a little bit of olive oil. Five hours. Now, and and it's ready. right placed beside a fire? It's right beside the fire, yes. Cold fire, you leave the pot there for four and a half, five hours. And throw a log on it now and again? Yes. Peasant and food, you think this is tender now, completely tender? It's very tender. I can, uh, I can assure you, guaranteed. <laughs> All right. So where do you think this came from uh, locally here, Nicola? It's very locally because if you look down here, oh, we've yeah. got a beautiful Adriatic and just we've got loads of it. So just right off the coast here? Right off the coast. As if fresh you go as get. As fresh as you can get. Manja, manja. <laughs> so I'm ready to try as well, are you? Coming up on Cooking with Angus. People are flying by us with big old containers of octopus. Was your father a fisherman and was your grandfather a fisherman?
My first choice for college, GRCC. Why? Because what you learn in two years lets you transfer to a university at the top of your game. Because what you save in tuition is worth thousands of dollars. Because the hands-on learning and academic support are second to none. Because the honors program challenges you to do your best, while student life makes you feel connected to the world. All those reasons made GRCC my first choice and the best choice. I love GRCC because I love Grand Rapids. I chose GRCC because it's close to home. I can take my time to decide what I want to do with my life. I love this campus because it's an affordable way to take basic classes. I chose GRCC because it was the best place to get reacquainted with school. Because I love being downtown. Because it's military friendly. So I can pursue my dream of being a dental hygienist. Because it offers the same educational experience as universities. On the coast of the Adriatic Sea in southern Italy, we found a huge fish market. The local fishermen were just starting to bring in their day's catch, so this market was hopping. We managed to find this amazing market right on the seaside, and it's just absolutely buzzing with people. Uh, members of the general public, they've arrived fishermen with their fish and it's just people are flying by us with big old containers of octopus and squid and all sorts of great stuff. General public walking around buying it, it's just truly amazing. Our students are having a fantastic time. Nicola, how important is it for a chef in Italy to know and be able to navigate through something like a marketplace like this? It's very, very important because he wants to look after his customers, he or she, so they will be here at one point of the day and they will check that the fish is fresh, freshly caught by, check, by checking the eyes, that they're still nice and blue, that they're not turned white because that means the fish is old. They look all these things. And, and they look very stiff. And they look clean. very stiff and I mean, you, you can see yourself, they're very well preserved. Oh, look check, at this one. Check out this size of calamari. And this is small. This is small, okay? Because there are others that are really big. We do lots of work with calamari. We, we cut the heads. We use this to do salads. The rest of the body, once we clean them out, we can stuff them or we chop them up. We use for seafood, pasta, you name it. We mix with other fish. We go lots of work out of calamari, you know? Okay, this is what, what we call zanchetta. It's very similar to a, a sole or a dover sole. Yeah? This is a big one right there with a large belly. This is codfish. Cod? Yes, it's a cod. Yeah. Codfish. Codfish. Codfish is flounder. Flounder? Yeah, that's flounder. Okay. See, the man speaks better English than me. This market is unbelievable. Does this happen every single day? Every single day. What happens here, as you can see, we go to the sea along there, the boats that come in, you know, around about the afternoon, five o'clock, and they all deliver this beautiful fish. These people, they're all happy because they want to sell, sell, sell. sell, sell. That's it. And this is members of the general public, restaurants, everything? Yes, everything. And uh, obviously, the main restaurants and hotels, they will have uh, an ordering system, you see? From this? Yes, from here, and they'll get the best of fresh every day. Wow. We found a fisherman from Michigan. That's impossible. We just found a fisherman here, and he's got a Michigan, Michigan T-shirt on. It's pretty incredible. Ciao. The fishing boats, filled with fishermen hoping to sell their catch, were just coming in. It's crucial for a chef to know a fisherman's perspective. So with Nicola's help, we spoke with a couple to get their story. How long have you been fishing with the boat and was it, your, was it in your family? Was your father a fisherman and was your grandfather a fisherman? Sono 30 anni. He said he's been fishing around about 30 years. Tuo padre, la tua famiglia era anche pescatore. Sì, sì, yes, mio padre. 
mio his, fratello, anche. His brother, his father, Insomma, all, all fishermen in family. The descendants. The descendants in family. What kind of fish do you like to eat yourself? And do you go fishing for that kind of fish? So, Molto più saporito. E, e so, He's saying he likes really to have small fish, little fish, any sort for soups, things like that. They're quite happy with that because they have a better flavor. Got a better flavor. And when you're fishing, do you ever think about what the fish, how the fish is going to end up on the plate? Che è specializzata su questo settore qui che mangia pesce. He's saying there is uh, so much of a uh, variety that we're happy in, in Puglia here, all the cost, you know, there's loads and loads of fish get caught every day. Di and di it's our tradition that we have uh, any sort of things and everybody's happy to see fish on the plate, okay. which is good for your diet. What is it about fishing that you enjoy most? Un emozione diversa. Okay, he's saying that uh, because they've been inherited is a job, and uh, it's the only job they can do, and, uh, and they love to do it. It's everything about it. Everything about it. So he's saying we, we love to go at sea because we don't know what we're going to catch. Every day is a surprise. <laughs> That's okay. So, well, and we surprise. love to do this. I like that. We love to do this. <laughs> okay, th thank you very much. Grazie. Grazie mille. Grazie, signor. Megan, before we go, I think I want to try to get onto the boat, okay? Okay. Are you ready to go? Yeah, can okay. I come? Yeah, let's go. Right. April! <laughs> you ready, girls? Don't break okay. your back, oh. man. Don't worry about my back, man. I'm on the board like I whip it. Coming up on Cooking with Angus. We take the mackerel that has already been marinated will be forming a chamber, the salt will be unified. My first choice for college, GRCC. Why? I was ready to build a career. I traded taking notes in a classroom for hands-on learning. I found a program where I can follow my passion. What I'm saving on low tuition will pay off if I transfer to a university. And I know the skills I'm learning will build a better community. All those reasons make GRCC my first choice and the best choice. I chose GRCC because it's close to home and I like the campus. Because it's affordable. Because I love the atmosphere. Because they have a great photography program. Because they have a great psychology program. It has the same activities as any other college. Because I can get my general classes out the way. Because it's quality, affordable education. Because it's close to home. Because I love Grand Rapids. For medical assisting. Because it'll kickstart my future. La Cusa de Queri is a hotel, banquet center, spa, and restaurant in Albarabuelo. The chef of the restaurant is Pierluca Ardito, who happens to be the team coach for Italy in the Culinary World Cup. Utilizing some beautiful mackerel and a few other ingredients, my GRCC students had the chance to learn a plate from this great chef. Girls, we have an absolutely amazing opportunity for you here. We have Chef Artito, who's going to show us some uh, ancient food that's been transformed into modern food. So thank you, Chef. Grazie, Chef. Grazie, Chef. Thank you very Grazie. much. Please. With Nicola translating for the chef, we got started right away. So it's a very so basic recipe, in other very words. Basic, very so it's recipe. almost like a peasant recipe. Yes, yes, correct. The ingredients for the recipe are mackerel, I pomodori del nostro orto. the hard tomatoes from our garden, frisella, 
like typical bruschettas of this area. And the additional, the new product is the mozzarella of bufala, spherification of tomato soup. So the spherifications are made by producing a liquid that is actually a solid, which is then going to be a liquid when you put it in your mouth. But not with elements of chimney. And also balsamic vinegar caviar. He's doing it on his recipe something called carpione, fried fish done beforehand, added with other ingredients. Okay. So this would be the older, the yes. older, yes. typical yes. way of preserving okay. this fish. Okay. Are you with me? The girls went to work readying the ingredients for mackerel al carpione, the marinated fish portion of the plate. First they cut the onions, which had been cooked in salt to bring out the sweetness. Then the carrots are cut as well as the celery. Everything is sautéed in olive oil and a few aromatic herbs are added. Fresh mint, lemongrass and chili peppers. Next the liquids are thrown in, one part white wine, one part fennel vinegar and one part water. The marinade is then brought to a boil. After the fish is filleted and fried, they're patted dry. Lastly, the marinade is poured over the mackerel. The fish rests in the fridge for three to four hours, getting the aroma of the ingredients. Now we're going to assemble the plate. So we break the, this frisella. We slice the cocomero. Togliamo i semi. We take off the seeds. Okay. We dice it up. Okay. a sistemare nel nostro Okay. Ora prendiamo il pomodoro. Now we take the tomato. It's called Pomodoro Regina, and it's very suitable to compose salads, any sort of salads. Okay. This is the caviar spherificato. Balsamic caviar. It's balsamic caviar allowed to, to cool in the olive oil. This isn't actually caviar. As Nico mentions, this is balsamic vinegar jello that is added to ice-cold olive oil in droplets and allowed to set, giving it the look of caviar. We take the mackerel that has already been marinated, it's ready to be served. Wow, that's a beautiful color. It adds up a little bit green vegetables. vegetables, yes. La mozzarella. Okay. Our mozzarella. Andiamo a condire leggermente con del pane e della polvere di olive nere nocche. It's going to the condiment is bread and uh, olive dust. Olive right dust. dust. Yes. Oh wow. That's beautiful. From from our own region. A little soup of tomato. These tomato soup spheres are made by using a modern gelling agent freezing them and allowing them to defrost slowly. It's world-class clever from Chef Ardito. Basilico? Uh, aromatic basil, basilico. E acqua di pomodoro. And water of, of tomato. 
and the water will soak into that bread. Yes. Okay. Wow, that is a picture. To finish the plate and add some acidity, instead of using lemon, the chef foamed some lemon juice and topped the dish with that. And of course, some extra virgin olive oil. And that's please done. That's beautiful. Wow, isn't it beautiful? Okay, go, try it. Get, get a little piece of the mackerel and a bit of the lemon foam. Coming up on Cooking with Angus. We've been to the market, we've seen the fish coming in from the sea, and now it's right in the plate for us. My first choice for college, GRCC. Why? Because I was ready to take my future into my own hands, and GRCC gave me that opportunity. Because the money that I'm saving on the low cost of tuition, I'll use to earn my bachelor's degree. Because I'm making connections to build my career. Because while I share my ideas with other students, I'm pushed to challenge my limits by my professors. All those reasons made GRCC my first choice and the best choice. We had been to the coast, we saw the fishermen bringing in the seafood to the market, and we saw a new take on an old way to cook that seafood. But I wanted my students to learn from Nicola a very special way to cook fish. So we visited Nicola's friend, Chef Francesco, at his restaurant Il Piatto Fumante to learn sea bass baked in sea salt. So we have a fish here to prepare this evening. And this is Francesco, the host, a friend of mine from a long time ago. He's the host, he's got this lovely place here. So the fish we're going to prepare is very easy and everybody will love it, okay? Francesco, what do we do first? Si, allora, sale grosso marino. So we've got some sea salt here. Lo si stende su tutto il, anzi facciamo così, anche un po' più veloce, e si, a formare un letto praticamente per farlo cucinare. Ok. Finché. We form just a bed so we can rest the fish on the top. Poi si prende il pesce, lo si alloggia sul sale in maniera avendo cura di coprire tutto quanto. Sì. We have just a little bit of lemon and a little bit of parsley, flat parsley or Italian parsley. Sì, sì. Giusto per dare un po' di just to leave a little flavor. Sì, di... It will cook with yeah. within. Per togliere anche l'odore un po' delle interiore perché comunque that will, will uh, the little lemon and parsley will, will take off because the fish is going to be sealed, okay? Mm -hmm. Totally. Conviene coprirlo tutto perché in forno potrebbe bruciarsi completamente se rimane scoperto. Invece e dove si mette un po' d'acqua. Sì, sì, adesso So we'll have to cover completely, totally, okay? So you might ask why you put all that salt? It's not going to be very salty, mm -hmm. this fish. No, because the salt, once we will put a little bit of water on the top, so it will not crack. That means we'll be, we'll be forming a chamber, the salt will be unified. So therefore, so therefore the fish will cook unified. It will not get any, any flavor from the salt whatsoever. Yes? The dish is done. 20 minutes in forno a 180 gradi. 20 minutes in the oven. 20 minutes in the oven, under the, the degrees. Okay. Celsius. <laughs> Francesco, vai, cucina. <laughs> All right. <laughs> While Francesco got this fish started, he sent out some amazing seafood for us to try. All completely raw and full of flavor. Here's a plate of 
tuna carpaccio with olive oil, croquette, a little red onion. So fresh, just sliced, ready to eat. Here we have a marinated tuna tartare, diced up, seasoned, again a little balsamic vinegar and a little olive oil. So these dishes are so incredibly flavorful. But the great thing and unique thing is that you, they're, s they're so close to coming out of the ocean that you can eat them raw, which is remarkable. Just like that little uh, sea urchin we had a little earlier on mm -hmm. today. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. I have to get in here before it all goes. Mm. That's so good. How is that? You can taste salinity. The arugula has a little bit of pepperiness. How is that? Delicious. A little bit dry. I love this tartare. It's just really Very rich. Good. But you can still taste the tuna. That's the mm -hmm. thing. That's the most important thing about making tartare. Mm. You know, if you make it with beef, whatever, you have to taste the actual ingredient. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no point in doing tuna and then you can't taste the tuna. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. We're gonna be here for a while eating this girl, so let's just enjoy it. Soon the sea bass was ready for the table and Nicola showed us the method of cleaning the fish for guests. Okay, there we have the fish we prepared the on and it's cooked, it takes about 20 minutes, no longer than that, 15 to 20 minutes, 180 degrees. So now I'm going to open the crust of the salt and we're gonna clean the fish. And we'll have to taste, all right? See, tum, 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 tum. Look at that. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the head off first, see? Put there, and then take some of the tail off. Actually, put the fish out of the salt. You can put here, so we can discard this. We can work better that way. Take the skin off. See what comes out. Wow. Or come all one shot. It's so juicy underneath still. Keeps all the moisture yeah. in there, it's shiny. It smells good. Doesn't get any fresher than this either. Not fresh in the, we've been to the market, we've seen the fish coming in from the sea, and now it's right in the plate for us. Little bit for you. A little bit for you. And a little bit for the chef. And careful, you might find a bone. Oh, that's the no bone, yeah. There you go. All right, girls. Here and a little bit of salt. Try it. So let's see what happens now. Let's see if it's very salty. You tell me. It's not salty at all. Mm. No salt. What did I tell you? Yeah. Wow, it's, it's incredible. Like remarkably you see moist. How soft it is. So moist. Next time on Cooking with Angus. Each line has its own computer. This skill doesn't come overnight. Mm -hmm.